I'm uh, Joey Ocon from the Department of Chemical Engineering here in the University of the Philippines. Um, I finished my undergrad in 2008 in the same department, and master's in 2011, and then I left for South Korea for my PhD. And I just finished it this year, August uh, 2015. So my PhD is in Environmental Science and Engineering. I'm, I'm working on uh, um, applied science and basic science uh, researches for electrochemistry and catalysis in energy and environmental applications. I'm working on a lot of uh, research fields now. For example, in uh, battery technologies, we're trying to develop uh, new electron materials which can incre increase the, the capacity of uh, lithium-ion batteries. On, on the other hand, we're also trying to work on other lithium chemistries. So these are the type of uh, lithium batteries that might uh, be commercialized, commercialized in 10 to 15 years from now. So lithium sulfur uh, chemistries or lithium air chemistries. So I've, I've uh, developed along with uh, my, my teammates uh, new electron materials which have increased the capacity and in, in terms of another type of uh, battery chemistry I've uh, developed a new um, or tested a new semiconductor so it has never been um, tested and used before as a battery material so that was the topic for my PhD. So it's a new type of metal air uh, battery running on germanium anodes. And for if, if you want to, I know, to check my other contributions, contributions are not really major because I'm still young as a scientist. So you may want to visit my website. So this uh, is all written in the for example, in research unit, you can download all the papers and you can read them and if you have questions, then I'll be uh, glad to answer all of them. For example, if you decide to go to grad school, you have uh, two options in terms of uh, finding a research topic. So it, can, it can be initiated from your side or it can be from the professor's side. Um, if, for example, you somehow thought of an idea and you found an expert professor uh, who has the right expertise then you work on the research study and also you have to take note on what the uh, available equipment are in the institute because um, when you try to read a lot of papers you have a lot of uh, really outstanding uh, machines and equipment but uh, most of them are not available in the country so in terms of uh, trying to systematically go about your research study, I think uh, you will develop that maturity and insight in coming up with a very good uh, research plan once you read a lot of research papers. So before thinking about your research plan, then I, I would suggest read a lot of uh, previous works first. And then by reading hundreds or tens and hundreds of of previous works and papers, it's it will be very easy to plan your research study. It depends on your research field. It, 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 it doesn't have to be very rigorous. For example, in the life sciences uh, research areas, they have to do experiments from morning until midnight or sometimes in early morning. Uh, um, that's what I have heard from, from my institute. But for physical sciences or for in my research area, you don't have to do experiments from morning to evening. Okay? So it has, I think the um, half of the work in terms of becoming a scientist is how do you get all the data that you have gathered and how do you get insights, discover new phenomena or how do you make it useful for other people and in the end uh, it doesn't stop when you have the results from your experiment so you have to write something write a report or write a paper with regard to your experiment and then make it uh, readable for the other scientists in your field 
and more importantly, make it, make it readable for other uh, scientists also outside your main domain of expertise. And one last extra a note would be to make it uh, uh, accessible for, for general people. As a researcher, you're most you're most likely working on some projects, like short-term projects or medium medium-term uh, projects. So the biggest challenge would be how to manage your resources. So if you are a SILA graduate student, then the financial part is taken care of by your professor or by your group leader from the from your institute. Um, but as an independent researcher, like an assistant professor or a full professor, you have to manage your, your students, your financial resources, and the equipment in the lab, and the time in which you have to finish your, your research work. And of course, that's why you're doing your, your research, because you don't know the, what the results will be. So you're always hoping for good results, but of course, you should be always realistic of, of what might come and just draw on your uh, previous experience, um, in, especially when you're at the point of uh, cross, uh, uh, crossroad where um, which um, experimental study you want to pursue or this parameter you want to, to look at because you have limited resources. Yeah, of course. That's why, uh, relative to most countries in, in Asia, right? so we're not yet uh, very economically developed, but there are a lot of uh, other factors like corruption and the efficiency of the government and, of course, the private sector. Um, I, I think we have to invest more uh, with regards to basic education. I think the current government is doing that. And invest more in uh, training critical minded students, uh, scientists, and engineers. Uh, in the future, we're, we're trying to move at the knowledge-based economy. And it's very important if you have a very wide base of, of research scientists and engineers. And we need more scientists and engineers in the government for the government to realize that, that science and technology and innovation uh, will be very key if the Philippines is sustainably grow in the next uh, two or three decades. Um, we can look at a lot of examples for, for let's say in South Korea in one generation they have been able to grow and become a developed country like Singapore. Singapore has invested a lot in science also. And in, in the ASEAN um, it's quite difficult to compare Philippines with Singapore uh, but we can compare let's say with Vietnam or Thailand. Thailand is way ahead of us. Uh, Vietnam is now investing a lot. Uh, they have embarked on an ambitious project of sending around 10,000 PhD students abroad. And these scientists, will be, uh, after uh, being trained outside of the country, they will come back to Vietnam and work at the various government institutes. So we have similar programs with the Philippines now, but the scale is very small if we compare to the projects in the other countries. So I hope that uh, more support will come for science and technology, especially for, for the young students that you will not lose the passion for science. Um, most likely at the end of your five years in, in Kandang, uh, you might lose the, the drive to, to work in a science, uh, in a science career or take grad, grad school. So I'm in my in my uh, capacity now as a mentor, so I'm trying to convince a lot of my senior students to take grad school either in the Philippines or, or abroad and hopefully they'll return and mentor other students as well. I've seen a lot of uh, very, uh, very brilliant and very inspired young uh, students in the grade school or high school uh, 
uh, years, but sadly the passion is lost during college. And so I hope that uh, you will try to uh, personally uh, make an effort to not lose that passion. And it, it should come from the ac academic side also, is, which is training these uh, future scientists. problem that I see now because in the college we're producing a lot of let's say chemical engineers and other engineers but most of the, our graduates are working in the private sector and even in the industries which are not really aligned in, in our course and we have lost we are losing a lot of resources so for the country to move forward again uh, we must train more scientists a lot of uh, the scientific needs, and almost all of the scientific needs. And these uh, young scientists must work in the government to improve the system, must um, work in the private sector and convince these companies to invest more in R&D. And uh, perhaps by that time, uh, we'll be able to improve our uh, scientific and technology production in terms of uh, knowledge or patents which can lead to uh, startups and uh, small and medium enterprises because SMEs are the core of the industry in the Philippines and we must have SMEs which are working also in high value uh, products or science or technology based 